FacelessComedy.CJB.net its capital will be Berlin, as from October the 14th, Warsaw by Christmas and Leningrad by 1992. <laughs> in the Gulf, Saddam Hussein denies Western rumours that there's a new love in his life. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Britain, the Green Party reveals an innovative new scheme to reduce the number of cars on Britain's roads. <laughs> as usual, we have four of the finest minds within a ten-yard radius. On my right are regular team captain, editor of Private Eye and star of Stage, Screen and the Royal Courts of Justice, Ian Hislop. And with him, writer, performer, producer, director, there's no one this woman won't sleep with to further her career, <laughs> Jan Ravens. <laughs> and to my left, our other team captain, the only alternative comedian to be named after a suburban railway station, Paul Merton. And with Paul, uh, one of the most talented and controversial investigative reporters the BBC has ever fired, Martin Young. <laughs> uh, like the panellists, the rules are very simple. Uh, two points for getting it right, and one point for getting it wrong, but being fairly amusing in the process, and no points for hiding under the desk and pretending you're not here. So, uh, being sticklers for old values, we're going to start off with round one, in which we show you some bits of footage uh, featuring people who've made the news this week. Ian and Jan, uh, who are these people and why are they so happy? Um, are they the security guards at Andy and Fergie's housewarming party? No. <laughs> uh, this is someone forgetting the old Germany, doing brilliantly. Mm -hmm. um, an organ grinder. It's the Labour Party <laughs> conference again, isn't it? <laughs> You were virtually right. Yes, the good burgers of Berlin it was. Yes. And they're celebrating, obviously, the unification of obviously. the two Germanies. Naturally obviously. Enough. That went without saying. You were going to say that, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so you can have two points. I'm feeling generous at the moment. The mayor of West Berlin, uh, Herr Walter Momper, uh, said it was a happy day for all Germany. Or ein Jubend für alle Länder, Wunder, Ferien im Vaterland, Gefährte über alle Mann bedeckt, Tag for all Germany. <laughs> Paul and Martin, uh, where is this empty hall and uh, what was it full of this week? Oh, bullshit, I should think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, you said that. No wonder you got fired by the BBC. Just about to be fired by them again. Um, it's the um, CNA Salesman's Conference, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maternity wear for the... Um, it's the it's Blackpool. It's the uh, Labour Party Conference Hall. And the, the shot showed all the delegates who supported Neil Kinnock this week over defence. <laughs> yes. Yes, there's a, there's a, a touch of satire there. Yes. 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 yes, absolutely right. Uh, Winter Gardens uh, in Blackpool it was, where the Labour Party Conference took place, and the politicians, of course, made speeches in front of those five giant photographs apparently taken from the knitwear section of Freeman's catalogue. <laughs> uh, Ian and Jan, uh, time now for a rather ambiguous passport photograph. Who is it and why? It's one of the Labour front bench who's had one of these beauty makeovers. Uh, <laughs> Gerald Kaufman, possibly. Yeah. No, yeah, you're you're at clutching at straws. Uh, no, yeah. That's actually very near the truth, because that is uh, a Labour delegate who was told that they needed more women on the front bench, and then who's done the decent thing and had an operation. <laughs> and from now on, he's going to be talking about home affairs. It's that Caroline person that couldn't get made a woman, uh, couldn't get recognised properly as a woman, that had the sex change and went to Amsterdam to the European Court of Whatnot. And, this and is she, what was in, she was in a Bond film. She was, she was a bonger. She was even but worse you're, than you're, Roger Moore. It's incredible. You, you've, uh, you've got it absolutely right, uh, your third attempt. Um, <laughs> it was uh, Caroline Crossy, uh, yes, who uh, was denied the right by judges to change her sex on her birth certificate to female. And uh, this was decreed by three men wearing tights and garters, long flowing robes and shoulder length suits. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy world. And uh, finally in this round, Paul and Martin, uh, who are this lot and what were they doing on everyone's property? Oh. Well, I, I, um, I think they're obviously lost. Perhaps it's the Liberal Democrats searching for a logo, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 soci the Society for the Right to Wear a Beard in a Built-Up Area. <laughs> that is the Liberal Democrats, isn't it? <laughs> yes, well, um, you never point for that, but uh, it's not actually the right answer. Um, oh, you want the right answer? Well, that would be ideal, yes, <laughs> but don't hurry yourself. There was a sign saying the Ramblers, and we rather think that they might have been the Ramblers. Mm. It's uncanny. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> There's nothing that gets past It's that you. kind of keen eye for investigative <laughs> journalism played the private eye of the magazine it is today. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the Ramblers beating the balance. 
Yes. It is, it is a Ramblers Association, yes. Uh, I'm prepared to, uh, to give Ian a point for reading for the word Ramblers. <laughs> um, they held a Forbidden Britain Day, a mass trespass on, uh, on private property to protest about uh, how the countryside has been spoilt by private landowners. Although, uh, whether the countryside is actually enhanced by the sight of 500 bearded liberals in bright orange pizzles and open-toed walking boots singing old Ralph McTell numbers <laughs> is beyond me. Still, uh, at the end of the first round, uh, Ian and Jan have an assertive five, and Paul and Martin have a meagre four. Oh, good. A slow start, isn't it? Well, time now to give our guests their homework to be handed in at the end of the programme. Uh, Paul and Martin, this is yours. And Ian and Jan, this is yours. Ah. <laughs> and between now and the end of the programme, you have to come up with a witty and amusing caption or a note from your mother. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, we're going to ask you to concentrate on four headlines from this week's tabloids and attempt to explain them. Uh, one each. Paul, a bit of a teaser for you. Come up to my place and see my sharks. Um, this was the, the man who um, has a couple of pet sharks in his... Um bedsit, or he's a sort of council flat. Mm -hmm. um, he keeps, um, they're sort of 12-foot hammerhead sharks, he keeps them in a, a teapot or something. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it makes a tea taste funny and eat all the biscuits. Yes, yeah, so Sebastian Grant, his name is, and he keeps two lemon sharks in his flat. Apparently they're the world's fourth most dangerous shark. Although how they measure how dangerous they are must be a rather long and messy process. <laughs> uh, Martin, police guards pay rent to King is yours. I think it's Tom King. Yes. And I think that he's got... So, when you say it like that, it's like a character in Lord of the Rings, Tom King. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Tom King danced across the hills. <laughs> it was a bright and wonderful morning. Yeah. It's yeah. Tom King from Middle Earth, you're quite right. <laughs> and um, he's, he's surrounded by half of the Metropolitan Constabulary at any given moment, and they have to sort of kip down in his place, and he's charging them rent. It's, uh, you're absolutely right, yes. It's uh, a bit mean, isn't he's it? He's charging them £40 a week rent to rent uh, the cottage in his grounds. So if the cottage is in him, his grounds, I hope he's paying poll tax for them. <laughs> there you are. Not funny, but it was satirical. <laughs> Jan, uh, zapped by your zip. What's this all about? Mm. This Swedish man who uh, has invented some sort of electronic device that bleeps if you leave your flies open. It's incredible, <laughs> but it's true. Is that, is that the right answer? It is the right That's answer. That's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You can tell I've been reading a quality newspaper this week, Ian. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Swedish engineer Daniel uh, Steinberg has invented a battery-operated trouser zip. Uh, which, uh, when left undone, as you say, delivers an electric shock to the groin area. <laughs> Finally, Ian, your uh, cryptic clue is writer's mother libelled by BBC. What's all this, all this about? I don't know why I get the libel question. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know very little about it. Uh, this one is, is Mrs Whitehouse. And amazingly, she hasn't sued anyone. She's been sued herself by Dennis Potter. Um, not for saying that Black Eyes was absolutely abysmal. Um, that's comment. It's not libel. Uh, <laughs> You're just covering yourself here, aren't you? I'm just um, filling in the rules. No, she yeah. actually said that Dennis Potter had been so traumatised by seeing his mother having um, adulterous sexual intercourse with someone else that he'd immediately developed an unpleasant skin disease. And this is the woman who complains about other people being offensive on television. <laughs> You're absolutely um, right. Sorry, Ian, what can I say? Hysterical. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're yeah, absolutely right. You've got your two points. What more do you want? Um, yes, it was Mary Whitehouse. And it is astonishing, I must say, that uh, when she says something outrageous and sexually graphic like that, uh, I mean, who do you report it to? No one left it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which brings us finally uh, to the end of that round, um, mercifully. And uh, Ian and Jan have an enviable nine. <clears throat> and Paul and Martin have a puny eight. Here's your clues which relate to a major story of the week. Their job, should they choose to accept it, <laughs> is to identify which story. Ian and Jan, uh, does this mean anything to you at all? Hi, hi. Oh, no. Hi. It can't be about this poor woman that got done the shoplifting that used to be in Heidi High, can it? Uh, no, no, it, it can't. can't. Now, that's Mary Whitehouse territory. Thank goodness. Oh, look. Oh, no, it's, no, it's, it's these... Um, oh, goodness. It's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the Romanian people... Uh, that came to stay at Pontins for a holiday Ooh, yeah, and good. then decided that, um, please, could they stay? Uh, they applied for the uh, asylum. Good. Um, you found the word, anyway. They, um, <laughs> it is an asylum. But then it... they changed their mind when they watched Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> <laughs> and said, can we go home again? Tartescu's great. Yes. <laughs> Well, you can have two points, because you've virtually got it. Yes, it's about the 76 Romanians who, shortly after arriving at Pontins in Somerset, decided to defect. 
Um, and in fact, where Jeremy Beadle came in was uh, that hoteliers on whom these 76 were billeted uh, thought that it was a Jeremy Beadle prank. <laughs> until, <laughs> true, until they realised that there wasn't anything remotely funny going on, and then they knew it was a Jeremy Beadle prank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Martin, uh, here's your bundle of confusion. Um, oh, and, yeah, well, it's the Soviet Parliament, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously. Defence cuts hit golf troops. There's Mikhail <laughs> Bokhtar. Yes. Um, uh, bit of, nice bit of tapestry there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good word, tapestry. I like that. Yeah. Oh, look, there's, there's Derek Hatton making an appearance at the Labour Party conference. <laughs> oh, look, there's Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> good. Now, uh, put all those together and what do you got? I'd have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, um, uh, there was a, an expert looked at the Bayou tapestry and said it can't possibly, because it's meant to be dated from the 11th century or something, and he said it, it couldn't be because uh, one of the soldiers depicted on the tapestry is quite clearly eating a kebab. <laughs> <laughs> there was that, and, and there's another one who's been, f who's, who's throwing up outside an off-licence. <laughs> and the third one's got an 18 to 30 club t-shirt. <laughs> As they go into battle, there's a little caption that says, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yes, it was uh, Robert uh, Chensoner, an expert in embroidery, in fact, who uh, claimed that the Bayou tapestry is a forgery uh, due to its quick-draw cartoon style, hence uh, Rolf Harris. Uh, also, the kebabs depicted in it were not introduced, as you mentioned, uh, until 1722. Although I'm sure the last kebab I had was slightly older than that, in fact. <laughs> uh, now the moment you've all been praying for, yes, it's our mini headlines round. These being the little subtitles used to break up tabloid stories like this. There you mm. are. Uh, we're going to give each team a set of mini headlines from a particular story. They either have to identify which story they came from or concoct a better one. It's so simple, a child of three and most disc jockeys could understand it. <laughs> so, uh, Ian and Jan, uh, which story are these from? What a genius, stout worker. Maxwell stories again. And brought to book. He doesn't genius read them. and stout are giving me some clues, Angus. Mm, good. They are, because genius is a sort of advertising ploy for a certain variety of stout. Ah. Yes. Crook stout, is it called? Yes. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. The Guinness it? Affair, that man, one of them that got done in the Guinness uh, bid for the takeover where they all were a bit... Yeah, I think the answer you're no, groping <laughs> towards in your usual fumbling manner is uh, Gerald Ronson. Jack, oh, it's that? Gerald Ronson. Yes. You, said, you said he can't afford to pay his, his, his fine of £5 right. million, pounds, poor lamb. You think he'd learn. He, only, he only has £10.7 million, pounds. that's apparently <laughs> yeah. no, it. His heads of figures isn't too good. He's done it again. <laughs> Well, two points to you. Very good. Gerald Ronson, who's currently uh, swabbing down tables and washing dishes in uh, Ford Prison Canteen, for which he's paid £3.20 a week, we gather. That's, uh, that's before tax. After tax, £3.65. <laughs> got a very good accountant. Um, <coughs> Paul and Martin, a criminally obvious set of headlines mm. for you. Well, obviously criminal, anyway. Rip off, swipe, fixed. Oh. Um, could this be the Office of Unfair Trading? Um, which is run by Sir Gordon Borry, who said that we weren't being ripped off or having our money swiped or having petrol prices fixed. Yep. yep and he said it's all right perfectly all right. They're entitled to charges ten times as much. It's uh, very well, interesting that uh, Gerald Ronson's company, Heron, is in petrol. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he can't possibly pay. I mean, just look how badly the oil companies are doing. <laughs> well, a point for satire, maybe. Uh, no, maybe not. Uh, two points to you, anyway, Paul and Martin. A look at the scoreboard tells us... Uh, the score, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, and also that uh, Ian and Jan have a relentless 13 and Paul and Martin an underrated 12. <laughs> well, now it's time for our archive round. We show each team a celebrated moment in the history of news <coughs> gathering, but stop it at a vital moment. They have to tell us what happened next. Uh, Ian and Jan, here's your bit. In fact, I think Tony without Dennis is like Torville without Dean. Now, what happened next? Well, this is um, Chesterfield. <laughs> I can read that. Yes. You see? Um, <laughs> That's how he got ramblers, that. you know. Uh, <laughs> this is a by-election. I think all that happens is that Tony Ben won the seat. Mm, I wish I could Does say Dennis yes, Healy but fall unfortunately, off the podium? well, or, that's or, not a million miles away. Or did they win? <laughs> an educated guess. <laughs> or did Tony Benn and Dennis Healy win the World Skating Championship? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good answer, but uh, I'll Sorry. give you a point for that. But uh, let's just see what in fact happened. In fact, I think Tony without Dennis is like Torville without Dean. <laughs> Yes, I'm afraid the set fell down, <laughs> the answer. Paul and Martin, you have to look at this man, I'm afraid. I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family 
ever to go to a university. What oh. happened next? Who is he and what happened next? Um, I've got no idea who I don't he is. Know who he is. I'm wondering if I know who Joe Biden is. I think he's a Democratic senator in the States or something like that. Well, this is amazing. I might be able to get this without any verbal clues. Do you want to, do you want to leap in here, Ian? This is Senator Joe Biden. Good, well spotted. Um, <laughs> ah, that's the one I was referring to. Yes. <laughs> he has this strange habit of actually talking about himself in the third person, but yes. And he said, why is it that Senator Joe Biden is the first Biden in 300 years or in hundreds of generations to go to university? Why is it that I'm the first Senator Joe Biden to stand on this platform? Mm -hmm. And then Neil Kinnock made a speech saying, hey, why is it I'm the first Neil oh, Kinnock yes, that's ever yes. been to university? And people, for some unknown reason, said, plagiarist, you've nicked the lot. But who copied from him? Ah, Biden copied from Kinnock, I remember that now. Absolutely right. Really? Oh, yes. well, then I was wrong again. Oh, good! <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have one point each, I think, for that. Let's just, uh, let's just have a look. I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Why am I the first Kinnock in a thousand generations to <laughs> get the university? My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football for four hours. Those people who could wait, work eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's not because they weren't as smart. It's not because they didn't work as hard. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. It was because there was no platform. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Neil Kinnock there winning the Donald Sinden Award for <laughs> uh, Yes, Joe Biden uh, lifting one of Kinnock's speeches. Of course, uh, what happened next for him was that his career came to nothing. Nobody voted for him and he never achieved high office. So, uh, in that sense, Neil Kinnock was quite a good role model for him. <laughs> so, uh, a look at the score. Good Lord. Uh, well, it's time now for our <laughs> odd one out round in which uh, we show each of you four celebrities, uh, three of which share some dark secret. Uh, what you have to do is find the odd one out. Paul, here's your glamorous collection. Cher, Cher. Maria Whitaker, Cher. Lady Geldof, and <laughs> George Schultz. <laughs> they they um, all take a double D cup. <laughs> uh, sadly not. Um. I'll give you a point for uh, entertaining us. <laughs> Is okay. Maria Whitaker the only one that hasn't had uh, sort of hair surgery? <laughs> George Schultz hasn't had hair surgery. Look at him. Is, is a Maria Whitaker the only one who's appeared topless in the public organs of the press? Your pardon mm, the expression. I think the closest uh, is probably Jan. Um, it's, I'll tell you the answer. It's actually that she, Maria Whitaker is the only one who doesn't have a tattoo. How do you know? Oh, what nonsense! Um, <laughs> and before you ask, it's on his buttock. <laughs> and it's a tiger. It looks really like it's on his nose, actually. <laughs> it's a strawberry. Right, Martin, uh, four great British eccentrics for you. Robin Day. Titch mm -hmm. Quackers. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, Lord Young. Lord Young. Get those confused. Urban War. Urban War and Cynthia Payne. Ah, well, I think, I think that three of them we're all clients of the fourth. And I, I mean, obviously, that Lord Young, Cynthia Payne and Oberyn War had television training from Robin Day. I'm very glad you, uh, you explained exactly what you meant. Um, no, no, I actually think, I'm happy I actually to think say. that I know that Sir Robin Day stood for Parliament in 1951. Good. And Cynthia um, Payne did. Yeah, Cynthia think. Payne did. Was it Miss Whiplash or the Corrective Party? Or something like that, yes. Yeah. Something very good. No, Got you're, you're, you're onto a good one here. And yes. Ron War, I believe, stood for Parliament. And Lord Young, although he's a very celebrated politician, never stood for Parliament. Very good indeed. Two points. Indeed. Brilliant. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Jan, here's your uh, gallery of heartthrobs. Dan Quayle. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. <coughs> Bonnie Langford. <laughs> Oliver North. <laughs> They've all had their yeah. lives made into a mini-series on the telly, apart from, um... Apart from all of them? Apart from all of them, yes. obviously. Uh, I, is there a, a very tasteless brain damage link here? <laughs> <laughs> Just before you go any further... Obviously no, not. <laughs> no. uh, thankfully not. The, the odd it, one out uh, of... Uh, um, Paul? Muhammad Ali didn't go to Vietnam, neither did Dan Quell. Bonnie Langford did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's Oliver North is the only one that um, served in Vietnam. Very good indeed. Absolutely right. Oh, Two well, points. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
you are right. Uh, Ali went to jail, of course. Dan Quayle was conveniently sent to a Swiss finishing school. <laughs> Obviously never finished. Um, <laughs> and uh, as for dropping Bonnie Langford on Hanoi, even the Americans wouldn't be that barbaric. <laughs> Good idea, as it might seem. Um, and finally, Ian, here are your grim visages. Nicholas Ridley. Oh, dear. Oh. Um, Lord Denning. Queen God bless Mother, her. And Paul Gascoigne. The link is that Nicholas Ridley made some very stupid remarks in The Spectator, which were printed. Lord mm -hmm. Denning made some amazingly stupid remarks in The Spectator. He then sued The Spectator for them printing his very stupid remarks, Good. which was quite interesting. Um, the Queen Mother's table talk. She said things like, good evening, Mr. Wilson, to the journalist. That was revealed. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Gascoigne um, is going to be a next week's spectator saying, I hate the Germans. I think they should be strung up with the Guildford Four. Um, well, you're sort of... Uh, you're sort of no, he's never been here. in the spectator. They don't know who absolutely. Gazza is. Yeah, absolutely right. Gazza is the, uh, the odd one out. Uh, all of them except Gazza were uh, publicly embarrassed by articles in the Spectator magazine, whereas Gazza has managed to publicly embarrass himself in every other magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, means the score is now... Uh, well, Paul and Martin have a majestic 19, and uh, Ian and Jan have a trifling 17. Oh, no. wow. And so, with the game almost excitingly poised, we come to our final missing words round. It's a quickfire round in which each team is shown some headlines of the week, but with a word or two missing. The teams have to identify the missing words or provide a better alternative. Seems simple enough, but just watch the mess they make of it. <laughs> right, uh, Ian and Jan, you're currently uh, not first, as we say, so you have the dubious honour of starting off. So, I want to see a what in the White House? A brain? <laughs> <laughs> no. An ensuite bathroom? Uh, a woman. Good, yes. This is John F. Kennedy's Yay. famous quote. Margaret Thatcher, yes. I want to see a lot of women in the White House. Cray <laughs> <laughs> uh, twins turn to what? Twins. Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> they must have turned to God. That's what people do. Absolutely right. Next is... They need him. Good. <laughs> One million pounds or I dump what on London? Bonnie Langford. Same. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, not that bad, actually. One million pounds or I dump... Oh, hundreds of unsold copies of The European <laughs> on London. <laughs> no, it wasn't Maxwell Robert issuing Maxwell a threat. No, it was our telling killer bar. Before you tell him. No, too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and lastly, the sexy antics that left Ted Heath what? Bandy. <laughs> <laughs> Cold is correct. Although Cold. Bandy is funnier. Um, <laughs> absolutely right. Uh, so two points to you. OK, Paul and Martin, let's have a look at yours. Uh, the What at McDonald's I Enjoy by Di. 17-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what papers you read. <laughs> with BAPS. <laughs> Think advertising slogans here. Paul Burton is going to work difference? for The Spectator. The, the difference. difference at McDonald's is correct. Uh, next is Pressure on Pope over what? N uh, nude basketball teams. <laughs> <laughs> Can I join the other team, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've gotten clear. Um, um, too simple. Gaza. No. Uh, uh, contra abortion. Contraception? Mm, no, abortion. I'm not going to give it to any of you. It's celibacy uh, is the correct answer. Next, uh, no what for years to come, says Kinnock. And uh, no chance of power. <laughs> no <Nor> lovely voice. <laughs> That's what you'd think. <laughs> no <laughs> tax cuts. Tax cuts is correct. Uh. And finally, Queen's remaining what should be removed? Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really oh, limbs. <laughs> political powers. Uh, political power. Oh, Absolutely right. right. Excellent. So, what a disloyal uh, comment. Well, uh, well, Paul is carted off to the tower at the uh, end of that earth-shattering climax. Uh, well, Paul and Martin have a, a triumphant 25, and Ian and Jan have a mere 23. So it only remains to check on our guests' homework at the beginning of the programme, if you can remember that far back. Uh, we asked them to come up with an amusing <laughs> caption or two. Paul and Martin, let's see what you two have come up with. Um, Sellerfield announces open-air swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think that's, I think you're right, Paul, but I think the, the electricity pylons give it away. The caption actually read, the dangers of nuclear energy being included in electricity privatisation is demonstrated by a 40-tonne anchovy. <laughs> Very good indeed. Ian and Jan, let's have a look at yours. Take two bottles into the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yes, work that one out at home. Uh, I, I, I 
think I'd like to call this one Mind My Merkin. <laughs> Merkin? What on earth is a Merkin? A Merkin is an Elizabethan word, Angus. And it means, it means pubic wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, you learn something every day, don't you? <laughs> It's an educational program. <laughs> Angus, why is she auditioning for Call My Bluff? <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. Uh, Ian, do you have anything to add? Or do you I, just want to go home? I don't. <laughs> pack it in. <laughs> right, it's the South Bank show, and that's Salman Rushdie. <laughs> <laughs> saying, do you think this disguise is working, Melvin? <laughs> <laughs> well, that neatly wraps it up. Thank you to our two teams, Ian Hislop and Jan Ravens. Paul Merton and Martin Young. Just time for me to reveal the sophisticated new method that John Major used to decide today was the day to join the ERM. <laughs> Good night. Join us at the same time tomorrow when the boys are joined by Tony Slattery. Now, apparently a girl's best friend is a vibrator. Cheaper than diamonds, I guess. Girl's best friend, next. <laughs>